Hey, what's up everybody? This is Brian here and I'm going to do an unboxing as well as a demo of a great new Christmas gift that I received from my amazing wife. She purchased for me this year the Wallabot DIY 2 model. Now, for those of you that are not familiar with this device, they have an older model that was fairly popular. Essentially what it does is it goes beyond your typical stud finder and allows you to actually, as it says right here on the box, see what's inside your walls. So if we go ahead and turn this over, we can see on the back here that we have some initial instructions here, look before you drill. And then under get started, we see things like downloading the Wallabot app, launching the app to pair the device with your phone, and then watching some training videos. Who needs training videos? We'll just give this thing a, a run for its money here. Um, it says here features, it detects pipes, wires, and studs with stud center detection. It works on drywall, it wires, wirelessly pairs to your phone, and uses an internal rechargeable battery. Now, from watching videos of other models of this device, what I saw was that one of the, the disadvantages was that the old unit actually strapped onto your actual phone and plugged into your phone's power port in order to give it power. This particular model, the DIY2, essentially pairs with your phone, I believe over Bluetooth and or Wi-Fi or a combination of the two. I'm not entirely sure yet, but I do know that it does not require plugging into the actual phone itself as the older models did. And essentially what this device does is it allows you to put it up on a wall, which we'll do in our demo in a little bit, and see visually what's behind the wall itself. And you can see like little pictures on the box here of wood, metal, pipes and wires. And there is even something here that says movements, and it's a picture of a mouse. <laughs> so you can see mice inside your walls. Isn't that awesome? So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this off for a second here and just show you the case that it came with as well. This is a pretty nice case. This was an extra add-on to the base unit itself, but it's a nice protective case. It says Wallabot right on there. If we go ahead and open it up, take a quick peek inside, we can see that there's a nice elastic here to put the device behind. I'm assuming that there's probably some cables or miscellaneous accessories that go with the unit that you can put in this useful pouch here. And again, it's a nice heavy duty case, so the Wallabot DIY 2 will definitely stay safe in this case. So let's go ahead and actually unbox the unit and see what's inside the box itself. Okay, so I've cut the ever precious seal that comes on the box already. I'm going to go ahead and open up the box here. And upon opening the box, I see that we have this branded literature here. Keep your Wallabot DIY2 safe. And it says get the protective case and an accessory kit, which I just showed you we have the case here. Uh, let's see, we got inside of here, we have the Wallabot DIY2 device a USB charging cable. So this will be to recharge the battery. I'm not sure if it comes with a charge already, but we'll find that out in a minute. And then it says, get started. Download the Wallabot DIY app to your phone from the App Store or Google Play for Android users. Launch the app and follow the in-app instructions to pair your phone and the Wallabot DIY 2 using Wi-Fi. And then it gives you a link to go to to watch tutorial videos. So then if we open the box here, we have the actual Wallabot DIY2 device itself, nicely branded, nice purple, dark purple color here, uh, DIY2 model. We have uh, connections on here. It looks like it's a USB-C connection for charging. And I'm assuming that this is also the power button. And just in case, um, we have USB-C connector here for charging. And it looks like a power button here to turn the device itself on. 
And then we have a label here that says, Ple place this side against the wall. Place this side against the wall. So I'm assuming that once we get everything all set up, we're just gonna take this down to our demo room and we're going to put it on the wall like so, and then go ahead and start doing the scanning of the wall itself. So I'm excited to try that out, but this is the device itself here. Nothing else worth mentioning that I can think of other than this is kind of a cool little logo here. So we'll set that off to the side and then we'll go in the box and it looks like all we have left here is a USB charging cable. And as I said, it's a USB-C connector. So we'll go ahead and uh, give that a little bit of a charge just in case it doesn't come pre-charged. And then we'll pick up with actually installing the app on our spare phone that we're going to use, I guess, as the monitoring device for what is found behind the walls. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to uh, go ahead and plug in the Wallabot device. You can see that we have the plug right here. Just gonna plug that in, and it looks like we get a little amber colored charging light here. I'm not sure if that changes colors when it's fully charged or if that's just indicating that it's charging, but I'm gonna go ahead and plug it in. There's a blue light over here, which I'm assuming means that it has power. Uh, but we're gonna go ahead and actually download the Wallabot DIY app on our phone and see what we can find out. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this down for right now, and we're going to go ahead and work on installing the app on our device that we're going to use to monitor it with. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead on our phone here, and I searched for Wallabot in the iPhone app store, and I see Wallabot DIY. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select that and say get. And then I'm gonna click install and the app will begin to download and install on my device. Okay, so now that the app has finished installing, I'm going to go ahead and click on open. And it looks like the app is gonna come up and give me some safety rules. It says, please read all instructions. So we're not gonna read all instructions because nobody ever does. And we're going to go ahead and click on I agree up in the top right hand corner. And it says, this app requires a Wallabot DIY device. Do you have a Wallabot device? Well, yes, I do, right here, the DIY 2. So I'm going to say yes. And then it's going to ask us to continue with a particular account. So in this case, we have options of continuing with Apple, continuing with Google, or creating an account. So I will try to go ahead and do continue with Apple. And then it's asking us place of purchase. I'm not sure why they need to know this other than marketing reasons, but we will go ahead and select Wallabot because that's who we purchased it through. And we'll go ahead and say done. And then it says registration successful. And next it's gonna ask us which Wallabot do we have? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and select that I have the Wallabot DIY2 for iOS and other mobile platforms. And it says, in a few simple steps, we'll connect your Wallabot via Wi-Fi. Let's set it up. So we're gonna go ahead and click Start. And then it says, hold down button for two seconds, then release, blue light will turn on. So I'm assuming that's on the Wallabot device itself as the picture shows. And I'm assuming it's this button here, which is already lit in blue, but I'll go ahead and hold it down for a couple seconds. And there's a blue light. So I'll then go ahead and click continue. And then it says, let's scan the QR code on the back of the Wallabot in order to identify it. So I'll go ahead and just turn my Wallabot this way and I'll pick up this phone and say scan. It's gonna ask me for permissions to my camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay. And then I'm gonna scan the QR code. And it says Wi-Fi pairing, connects through Wi-Fi, 
other apps will keep the internet connection through mobile data. Don't show this again. And I'll say connect. And so now it's saying it wants to join Wi-Fi network and it looks like it's a generic Wallabot underscore a, a number Wi-Fi network. So we're gonna go ahead and say join. And it says pairing to Wi-Fi. Okay, it wants to find and connect to devices on your local network. Not sure why it needs to know that, but I will go ahead and say, okay, just to simplify this. Okay, and it says transferring software. Soon the Wallabot will restart and the app will reconnect to the new software. So we'll say join. And then it says connecting to Wallabot. It says connected. So then it says wall types, Wallabot DIY2 scans drywall, and it explains like dry gypsum panels used after 1950s. It's all very specific details. We'll go ahead and click next. And so now it wants us to calibrate the actual Wallabot itself. So what we're going to do now is we're going to leave this desk here and we're going to go down to our actual demo space and get things set up down there to walk through a demo of the unit itself. Okay, so here I am back with another test of the DIY 2 and I've built a demo wall, if you will. Uh, it's kind of dirty, so let me just clean it off a little bit. But I have a piece of Romex here. I have a two by four stud and a piece of PVC pipe. I've gone ahead and launched the DIY2 app and it's asking me to do a calibration. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start calibration button. And it's going to tell me to put the device firmly on the wall. So I'll go ahead and do that and click next step. And then I'll click start calibration. It says calibration complete, two different scan modes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click image. And then it shows me a tutorial of how to do the scan. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start where there's nothing and say start scan. <clears throat> and we'll see no object detected yet. So I'll scan slowly. And right here, I'm getting a wooden stud, which obviously that is a piece of Romex. It is not a wooden stud. So I'm not sure why that's saying it's a wooden stud. And if I move down, it seems very, very inaccurate as far as the visual reporting on the screen. Because obviously I'm still on the same Vicinity, but it's popping on and off the screen. But anyways, that's not a wooden stud. So I'll move on and go to my actual wooden stud. And I'm now on my stud. And it's saying that the center is where it's showing the dotted lines, which I can see my screws, so I know that that's accurate. If I move off, it goes off the screen. I'll then move on to the PVC tube pipe. So I'm now on my PVC pipe, and you can see on the screen it's coming up as a wooden stud also. So thinking that maybe the calibration didn't work, I'll go ahead and do another calibration process. So I'll say start calibration. 
place it firmly on the wall. Next step, and then I'll click Start Calibration. Calibration complete. So I'll go ahead and start again, go through my little test again here. I'll do a different position this time. So I'll move nice and slow. Again, it's detecting my piece of Romex as a wooden stud, which as you can see, this is not a wooden stud. It's a piece of electrical cable. I'll then scroll along here and get to my actual stud. And you'll see the stud showing up correctly. And then I'll move on to my PVC pipe. And that is also showing up as a wooden stud. Now this is just standard half inch sheetrock and I will turn it around so you can see what I have set up on the back. So as you can see I just have PVC pipe fastened to the wall board and I was scanning in an area that did not have the metal clips. I have a 2x4 stud. And then I have a piece of Romex cable just stapled into the board and I scanned where there were no staples. So I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, but it does not appear that the device is picking things up the way that it should. And just as another test, I have a piece of loose Romex cable here. So I'm curious as to whether or not it will detect that because in the, the demo videos for this device it shows someone moving a cable behind a wall and the wall about picks it up. So let's see if that actually works. Make sure it's in frame here. Okay, so I'm going to start out with nothing, and then I'm going to move this piece of Romex behind the wall board. Okay, so that's actually coming up and detecting a wire, and as I move it, you can see the image is updating properly on the screen. So that's interesting because if I then go over to this piece of Romex, up, oh, that's actually showing up as Romex now. So that's really interesting because you saw earlier it wasn't showing up as Romex, it was showing up as a stud. Now it's actually detecting it as electrical cable or pipe and wire, if you will. And then if I go over here, that's my stud. So now I'll move back over to the wire. And it's coming up as pipe or wire again. So I guess that's a good sign. So let me see now if this PVC pipe comes up as a pipe or a wire. And I'll do a couple different locations of it. Okay, it's coming up as a wooden stud. Coming up as a wooden stud. Uh, let me see if I have another piece of PVC around. do just happen to have a piece so I will go ahead and put my wall about on and we'll see nothing 
and then I'll put a piece of PVC behind it and it's coming up as a wooden stud. If I move it a little bit away from the wall, it's coming up as a pipe. So if I have it right up against the sheetrock, it's saying it's a stud. And if I move it a little bit away from the wall, I don't know if you can see from that view how far away I am, but I'm probably about an inch away from the wall. And it's showing up as a pipe. And I'm moving it around, and you can see the image reflecting that movement as well. But if I bring it and put it right up against the wall board, it then shows up as a stud. So kind of inaccurate because I know in some cases you can have PVC pipe that's pretty much right up against your wall board. So let me go back over to the Romex and do that again. Okay, so that's showing up as a wire, so that's correct. And what I notice is the area where it's reporting correctly, it's not stapled up directly against the sheetrock. It's, it's pulled out maybe a half inch. So if I go down to where I can see that it's actually attached directly to the sheetrock. It comes up as a wooden stud. So it's almost as if the device thinks that anything that's right up against the sheetrock is a stud, and then anything that's not right up against it, it will detect as a pipe or wire, which I don't know is entirely useful or accurate. Uh, so these are my findings and let me know if I'm doing something wrong. Thank you.